Welcome to another episode of 72 Pin Connector. With us this week, we have Tom Webster. I'm here. Yes, you are. I am. Josh. Hey, I'm here. Adam. I am also here. You are a figment. A figment, sir. <laughs> oh. Yeah. Yeah, oh, just, just a figment of Tom's imagination. Yeah. You are, you are not Tom wrong. doesn't have an imagination. I take pills for Damn you. Damn savage. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so how have you guys been doing this? Well, actually, for me, last two weeks. Two yeah. weeks? Yeah, you've been gone. How is, Actually, how are if you've been doing? How are if you've been doing? Is how my are friend. if you are been how is are doing? If, if you were, how are you? I doing. am were. Yes. So am good. <laughs> no. Um, All right. Yeah. No, that sounds right. How's it been? Yeah. How's it been? Eric? How's it been since you've been gone? Since you've been gone. No, I know. Um, I, no. I was hoping you wouldn't do that, but I was thinking it too. Oh, come on. It's me. Of course. But um, <laughs> all went well. Um, my sister came into town, so we went to Olympic National Park and went nice. camping. Nice. There's some really cool shit out that way. Hmm. There's also a really, really, really shitty beach that people sell as being really, really awesome that takes <laughs> three miles to hike in, backpack, camp, and hike out. And this beach was littered with kelp and sea fleas and dead crabs and... Nice. Damn, that sounds awesome. So you, <laughs> yeah. you had some dinner right sounds there. Fantastic. You had a seafood salad. Pick it up. A seafood yeah. sandwich? A sea- seafood sandwich? Yeah. A sandwich. <laughs> uh, 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 I see what you did oh, there. I, I got you. No, Jesus but it was, it was a good time. Um, Suck missing the cast, but it was a nice time. So, yeah, I've, I've never nice. actually, like, most Pacific beaches are shit that I've been to. Only Southern California has mm-hmm. good Pacific Ocean beaches. So, some of these are really cool. It's just that one was dirty. Okay. Uh, there was one that's just super long that they have different numbered sections of it. Um, mm-hmm. That had like we saw some whales and stuff on it, because oh. which is cool up like, here. Like there's not, a lot of not whales in the water, but on the beach. No, no, in the water. On the beach, just like on sitting the water. there in the water in the parking lot. Actually, there's okay. a couple orcas just sitting there in, chilling in, in the yeah. cars. All right, yeah, yeah. cool. Let's just make sure <laughs> they, they just got home from Sea World. Yeah, yeah, that makes that makes sense. But um, yeah. <laughs> nice. So there's this one beach that was um, it's called Ruby Beach. We got there about an hour and a half before sunset. And this fog starts to roll in. I guess it's really known for being one of the creepiest beaches. This fog <laughs> rolls in and there's all, the water has all these huge rock structures out there. And then this fog slowly rolls into where the rocks slowly get harder and harder to see. And I think it was um, The Lady in Black or something was this movie about this house out in the middle of a bog. And it was really foggy uh, and stuff. It had that kind of feel to it. It was really cool. You had all this dead driftwood all over the beach. Like stacked nice. up tons of it hmm. because it's a rainforest <laughs> out there. So there's a lot of trees. Mm-hmm. And then you just had this fog effect. It was just really fucking cool. Silent beach. Huh. Silent <laughs> beach. Yes. Yeah. Silent Hill six, the beach. I, I was a little worried because I seen something that I thought was a pyramid head running at me. You know, some kid with a chip bag on their head instead. So I was, but I was you okay. killed him. Nice. Oh yeah. <laughs> okay, good. Yeah. And I just had to dump him into the ocean and yeah. hope the riptide took him. I mean, you, you can never yeah. be too sure. Yeah, no. You, you gotta be safe. You can't fuck with those pyramid <laughs> yeah, heads. No. No. <laughs> uh, so what about you guys? What have you guys been up to? Um, oh, anyone? you know. I went to an international market. Oh. Ooh. Oh, did you? Um, yeah, this Jungle place gyms? is so good. I know. Yeah, Jungle Gym. Yeah. The place is called Jungle Gyms. It's in Ohio. Um, I, obviously, you guys are familiar with it. Josh is not, but nope. <laughs> Jungle Gyms <laughs> is this giant international market. It's this giant grocery store. Um, it's on like a three hundred thousand square foot complex, and it's like an attraction. People actually drive out of state to go to this place, and they're known for um, carrying all kinds of international groceries. There's full aisles for certain countries like all all kinds of stuff um there's like a whole room for stuff from uh holland france there's one for uh scandinavia there's ireland germany belgium there's whole aisles with stuff from china japan taiwan hong kong there is an entire aisle full of nothing but waffles that's what i heard No. Just waffles, like hot, steaming, fresh <laughs> Belgium waffles. waffles. Yeah. The entire aisle. No. Yeah. Whole yeah, aisle. Salt- 
Got so, it. Sounds great. Yeah, no, that's but awesome. I mean, there's, there's so much stuff here. And it's got, like, animatronic things in it, like characters and weird, crazy restrooms and a giant fire truck covered with a bunch of hot sauce bottles. And it's just a cool place. So... I ended up buying a bunch of stuff just to try, just random stuff from different places. And one of my favorite things is called Stroopwafel, which I'm pronouncing like a dumb American. And they come from the Netherlands. And it's these little uh, these little waffle discs. It's caramel. Oh, that's oh shit. They're so chewy. we've, we've actually not, got a real crunchy. Stroopwafel on camera yeah. right now. Yeah. So, so And one thing you can do with this is you place it on top of your cup of tea and it warms it up. And it's delicious. Oh. So is that the entire thing? Or was there another part like it's an Oreo that you just kind of ripped off the top? No, that's it. That's the thing. Okay. So think uh, a super thin waffle that has like some type of caramel uh, spread on top like uh, peanut butter-ish, it looks like. Um, No, it's kind of just... Is it like a flat circular waffle cone? It was like it's soaked in it. Oh, okay. 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 But it's it's not crunchy. It's chewy. It's very much bendable. Oh, you can see it's delicious. Oh, <laughs> don't you I fucking see. eat that. <laughs> I'm about to, but, uh, oh my God, it's so good with some tea or something. We, and, we um, have a, we have a call out from chat. Someone wants you to ooh. describe the delicious Inca Cola. The Inca Cola. Yes. Inca Cola is also delicious. Uh, I don't know how to describe it though. I was, um, it doesn't taste like it looks because it's. It's like a green color, like a yellowy green. It kind of looks like Mountain Dew or something, but it tastes very much, uh, I don't know, almost kind of like a ginger ale meets a cola something. I don't know. I don't know how to describe it. It was really good, though, and I don't remember where it came, where it comes from. It comes from Peru. Peru. Okay. Yes. Nice. Yeah, it's really good. I like that a lot. Hmm. So you went but grocery yeah. shopping. I did. I bought a bunch of stuff. I bought some chocolate from Belgium. I bought some uh, recommended things from the Holland room from our friend Tim. He told me to buy some things. And I know they were good things because none of the packaging has any English words on it. So <laughs> they you know, it's the real thing. <laughs> <laughs> real deal. Yeah, that, that place awesome. is so cool. If you if you are in the area somehow in Ohio and don't you have, have the chance, definitely check that out. Don't they have like two entire aisles of different cheese? Um, I might think of something else. A giant section of cheese, yeah. <laughs> okay, <laughs> they, they have got, like twenty-four foot just for different types of peanut butter. Jesus, yeah. They had a whole big display with nothing but honey and different types of honey, oh, and man. they've got like an exotic meat section where you can buy weird meats and stuff. Um, like they bacon even, and bacon. Yeah. <laughs> and there's even like a regular produce section and then there's international produce. So it's, it's really just all kinds of stuff. Hmm. hmm. That sounds interesting. Yeah. Yes. It's great. I did see one weird thing. So we live in, uh, Tom and I live in Seattle as many of you already know. So we um, see a lot of weird things, not just one or two weird things. There's a lot of weird things. There is, um, a famous market called uh, Pike place market. It's the one where they throw the fish, so everyone knows it from the place that throws the fish. But um, there, it's hipster as shit out here, and there was a st- uh, booth out there selling honey. And I'm like, oh, okay, a lot of different honey. What kind of different honeys can you have? There was a honey that was pollinated by blueberry plants. Honey that was pollinated mm. by strawberry plants. Hmm. <laughs> I'm like, really? Can does the honey taste any different if it's pollens from different plants? I imagine it would. Yeah. Yeah. It, I'm trying to think of like, what not. else. So the honey that tastes delicious tastes like cloves? Because I've ate cloves before. Yeah. They taste like shit. <laughs> it, it has its place, all right? Okay, but it's not on a peanut butter sandwich place. Like, I'm not going to go pull no. up some fucking cloves and throw them on my peanut butter sandwich. No, that's what you do. Banana Are you thinking of clover chips? honey? Yes. I don't think that's the same thing. Yeah, no, that's totally different. What I uh, thought is oh, no, okay. it's totally different. Well, fuck y'all! <laughs> don't make me. Aww. It's it's all good. It's all good. <laughs> yeah, I, I imagine that different Clove pollen would, would be way worse. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? Next time on Seventy Two Food Connector, clove honey. 
eaten by the spoonful. <laughs> nice. Uh, what about you, Josh? Been up to anything? Mm-hmm. <clears throat> what was uh, that? I went to Long Beach. <laughs> Long Beach. I went to Long Beach for uh, for work. It was cool. It was great. Um, ate a lot of delicious food. Um, just kind of wandered around Long Beach uh, in the time I had off, but pretty much absolutely slammed all weekend. It was it was brutal. <laughs> but uh, other than that, yeah, just pretty much. Da, da, da. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's pretty much it. Just hang, just hung out in Long Beach. Had some uh, pre, got lost in Long Beach. Ended up just have no, having no idea or direction about where I should be going, what I'm doing, <laughs> while uh, outside of work. Just because I wor- overworked myself at work, so then when I came outside of work, decision making was difficult. So I know that feeling. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, cool! You're back. Awesome. I'm here. <laughs> Well, yeah, I never left Josh. Okay, I'm, I'm still here. Having some, I'm having some technical difficulties on my end, <laughs> <laughs> but I can actually hear you guys again. This is great. Cool. We're back in order. This is good. That's awesome. going to come in handy later. Time out, time out. Were yeah. you unable to hear us and you somehow picked up? Yes. Holy shit. How the fuck really? did you do that? That was yeah, great. That, I'm job. impressed. Oh, thank you. <laughs> That's improvisation at its finest. <laughs> that is why Josh is a professional podcaster. Yeah, I, I tell you all my all my secrets. Anyway, now that I can actually hear you guys and and, and <laughs> comment and reply, so oh my god, yeah. In um in Long Beach, we were um we had some pretty delicious fish tacos. I've never had fish tacos before. Mm. So that was my first uh, first fish tacos. Fucking bomb! Love Super some good fish tacos. I've never and had then fish we, tacos. Really? You should come. Yeah, I've also never had them. They're delicious. Uh, yeah. Granted, it different sounds like something I would that. love, but yeah, I ended up like while I was in Long Beach, I was like kind of just wandering around, checking out like uh, random places because we didn't have very good internet. Hotel Wi-Fi is not the best place uh, to have internet. I don't have a gaming laptop or any sort of mobile device to play games with, uh, mm-hmm. so I ended up just using my phone. And I'll talk about that later nice. on. <laughs> just, just hardcore phone gaming weekend or week, really, just week. <laughs> yeah. Hey, but, gaming's gaming. If it's good, it's good. Yeah, it was, it was or good. if it's not good, it's not good. But you know, right, right, exactly. It works out that way. <laughs> Fish tacos are amazing. They're they're they absolutely work a thousand percent. See, I, I just don't know if fish would work on a taco. Like to me, I, I never like picturing the amazing flavor of tacos. I don't. You have to. It's blending. not like you the have great thing. Of, thing. The great thing about tacos is that you could kind of put whatever you want. Like it's a, it's all just flavoring. Like you're not gonna put the same things together. You know, same thing if you want to make really good steak. You know, like carne asada tacos. You put them in, with different flavors than you would a chicken taco. And you put them with different flavors as you would like a um, like a verde like pulled pork kind of thing. You do all those differently. They all come out differently. So with a fish taco. It, it it had a different like a different sauce, different veggies. Everything was different. And it was awesome. It was, it was a breaded. It's a breaded fish. It's breaded fish yeah. taco. So it's, oh, okay. it's typically Amazing. made with white fish. Is what a lot of places use because it's yeah. a really. I don't mean white as in the color of the fish, but an actual fish called a white fish. Oh. It has a yeah, like yeah. a cod. Like a cod is pretty common. And because it's uh, they do that pretty often. That's it's like what you get with fish stick. Flavor. If you were to home Ooh. make uh, like make uh, homemade fish sticks, you do with like do it with like a white fish. Yeah, but like then, a, then you're not having like a real legit taco. Like I want, I want strips of steak covered in like peppers and shit. That's what I want out of a taco. Hey, I'll you take you to really tacos, good tacos. A taco is <laughs> just the way it's served. Really. No, no, tacos are an <laughs> art form. It's not just the way it's served. Oh. Like there's there's a specific ethos around the taco. Well, now that Tom went it all douchebag on us, um, <laughs> <laughs> I actually, I, um, I've I've got a food story today. I'm pretty That's sure right. I almost died. So, almost so today died. I've I've got uh, I've got a coffee burr grinder, and by almost died, I mean I totally didn't almost die. I've got the burr grinder for my coffee beans because I like fresh ground coffee. So I finished off one bag of beans, threw in the other bag. So I'm Saturday, of course, I'm going to have two pots of coffee. Turns out the beans in the second bag were smaller, 
but I left the setting on the same thing, so it ground for the same amount of time. So I ended up with literally double the amount of coffee in the pot that I usually add. And uh, I was I was over caffeinated. It was <laughs> it was crazy. I have never gotten so much done in my entire life. <laughs> so sweaty. Yeah, it was <laughs> just standing there vibrating. <laughs> <laughs> Being caffeinated is a pretty good feeling most of the time. But when you overdo it, it's just <laughs> it's, hey, it's, hey, uh, it's painful. So I don't know. Yeah, I, I, I I've been dancing with uh, dancing with danger with what I've been having. I've been having my double espresso coffee and I had it all week last nice. week. So, so when I got back on Friday, pretty much was on a downward spiral because I thought like, like I need to <laughs> I need to stop I need to stop drinking this coffee. But anyway, double espresso in coffee is madness you get the standing sweats yeah. <laughs> like it's, standing sweats. yeah it's like you're, you're like you're like in it so hard that that you just start sweating just just standing there <laughs> like, just, oh. now, but you get a lot of shit done you get a lot yeah. of shit done you're it's gonna like, build up a tolerance to that though yeah. and you're gonna that's ruin why, everything <laughs> yeah that's why that's why i've been doing nothing but like water <laughs> this the rest of the weekend so i normally you, don't i don't have it a lot i have it very rarely but if you want to get a whole bunch of shit done that's how you do it. So you guys give me shit about drinking instant coffee, but here's part it, of the beauty of instant coffee is I typically is it, one cup of mine's probably about two cups of coffee in a cup. The beauty well, that's like ninety percent water too, right? Well, that's all coffee. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about that because mine's at least unfiltered. Ha! Ah, but no, really though, it's the caffeine eventually gets to the point where it just does nothing. <laughs> at all but anyway you guys been doing much gaming this week yeah um actually yeah. i did a little bit a little bit a little bit a lot of bit but a in a weird way a lot of it in a weird way let's hear about um, these mobile games yeah all right so yeah i'm in i'm in long beach so like, like i said a billion times so um so i didn't have anything so i was just mobile gaming just mobile gaming it up so i played like four games are the ones that I like stuck with. Uh, well, really, only two of them really. But I was playing Brain It On, which is actually pretty fun. So it's like I got really into like the puzzle games that I could find, um, just because I'm wandering around aimlessly through the app store, not trying to find like best of, but just trying to find something that keeps my attention and doesn't make me, uh, you know, download all of the applications for it, <laughs> you know, or or pay hella money for them to stop posting ads or messaging me like a needy girlfriend. Um, <laughs> so I know with brain it on brain it on is really cool. Cause you actually, um, the, the goal is really simple and it says it above each puzzle and it's just to move one object to another object by drawing on the screen. And then whatever you draw is physics. It's, it's, it's takes on its physics after you finish drawing it. So like hmm. you draw a ball, it'll drop and then hit another ball that you might be trying to move to the other side of the screen. Or you can draw a stick and the stick will fall down and hit uh, hit something. What was really cool is you can actually, like, there was one where you actually had to take a box and you had to take the box out of a, a cup. And then what you did is I made, I, like, I drew a little claw and then used leverage to take it. And since the weight of the back end of it was there, it just scooped it and, full, and flew it off. It was really fun. So there's all sorts of really interesting physics uh, applications to it um nice and that yeah that one was just like an absolute blast it was one of those ones where you get into it you're like oh, eh, what's this gonna be and you started messing around and they actually applied it really well it it hit kind of a wall and mm -hmm. uh it was a little bit uh a little bit difficult at where i'm at right now because i'm stupid so <laughs> it's, <laughs> but i'm figuring it out it's really good uh our friend rs uh opened me up to the world of mlg branded applications I don't know if you okay. if you guys what? have, have jumped into this? those. No, it's no. not actually it's not actually MLG, but they add like all of like the stereotypical MLG things to like random applications. Like there's MLG calculator. So like when you're typing, I was like, oh my god, oh my god, I've never done it before. Actually, I have it. This is the great thing about it being a mobile game. <laughs> every oh, time, you, every single time that you do any action in these. Let's see, do I have it here? Yeah, here it is. MLG calculator. Let's go. So every time you do certain actions, it says some random garbage from MLG. So everyone, buckle up. This is... Oh, God. 
it's it's coming through really bad yeah oh yeah not that's working, it Josh. no no that's actually it correctly it just it's just really crappy audio and every single time you do stuff it's like oh my god oh, blah, blah, blah. yeah equals blah, blah, blah. <laughs> they, had, they had flappy bird where all of the um environment was uh was like doritos cans and then you're like, oh had God. like, had like a uh, like a fedora on, and you're flying around, and you pick up like uh, you pick up a little piece of Dorito, and then it, like the whole game would freak out. It's a mess. Don't download those. <laughs> <laughs> those are just awful. Leave it but, to Josh. Yes, exactly. To the bad exactly. For it's, us. It's, yeah. It's, right. <laughs> when it when it came through, that's actually how it sounds. It's like loud, blown out dubstep on all the applications. <laughs> it's Jesus. So bad. It's so bad. <laughs> So that was coming through as crisp, I promise. But anyway, on nice. to like games that are actually fun. Um, there's one I played called OK, which is really, really cool. And I think, Adam, you should download this. You might actually really like oh, okay. it. So you're saying so, it's, um, okay? Okay. it's OK? Okay. It's OK. Actually, no, it's actually quite good. Um, it's OK with a question mark. Um, it, you have a ball, and then you, sh- and you can shoot it at... Uh, objects in like in the environment and then you bounce it off and it kind of ricochets around and uh, hits the other object and your your goal is to is to clear all the objects with one go but every single type of object makes a different sound and they actually did a good job <clears throat> making these different pieces of object like play like a little tune or a little jingle and the further and further you go along once you actually figure out like the one way to, f- to clear the level it plays like a little song it's like do 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 and you're like, whoa, nice. So it's actually like a lot of fun. They add like um, guitar strums. They add like little, like different shapes, make different noises. So it's really, it's a really fun to play with and try out different angles of, you know, like bouncing the ball around. There's like snaps too. So like you can snap at a perfectly upright and perfectly, you know, to the left or right. It's really, it's really, really fun. You probably hmm. enjoy it. Hmm. I'll um, into that yeah it's it's pretty cool I, I didn't think much of it it's what i do like about it is it's free but about mm. level 20 or so the developer has a thing say that it's just it's really clean it doesn't do anything too jarring it says hey pay what you want for this game how much do you think it's worth and then there's a little arrows and you go left to right you can say zero and that's mm-hmm. where it's default on it's default on zero and you go, okay one dollar two dollar three dollar four dollar whatever you think it's worth and then you pay that and then he says thank you and that's then you nice. play it's That's really cool. Really and nice. then at the main menu, it's not super jarring either. At the main menu, it just says, hey, thank you for your $1. Thank you for your $2. It says it right Ooh. there. But it's not like in your face, like popping up. Hey, how do you think the game might be worth more now? <laughs> you know, or like, yeah. hey, what, do you, what do you think? What do you think about that game? Was it good? Was it good? Was another it? 10 levels good? from now. Hey, do you still yeah. think it's worth a dollar? How about another? <laughs> <laughs> hey, you really enjoyed these last 20 levels. How about another dollar? Dude, Again, I dude, haven't got listen, too far. Put like 30 hours into this and you've given me $2. For the love of God, give me something else. <laughs> <laughs> I've ran out of the it's peanuts like... I bought with your first dollar, you asshole. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> You're starving my family, you prick. You... You barely bought me a coffee, you ass. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. But, uh, yeah. So, that was that was that game. You should abs- Adam, you should absolutely do it. I think you'd love it. I just uh, installed it. Yeah, you're, I think you're going to like it. It's pretty fun. It's really easy. <laughs> so, I don't and then, like, And then it starts getting a little bit more difficult. It's a good time. The last one I played, um, again, there was, there's a bunch of them out there that are really popular. And I know I can go for it really easily. Uh, and just go look at like best of, but this one I was just randomly browsing, right? So the last one I played was uh, I started playing. I haven't even gotten too deep into it. It's called Innocent, and it follows like a trend of games that I, I'm liking, and I hope that they keep doing that this with mobile games. It's like a text-based adventure, choose your own adventure kind of thing, mm-hmm. um, but with it, uh, they send you text messages. And there was a space one, and I forgot what that one was called, uh, where you're um, you're sitting there and you're texting. You play the guy. You play the guy uh, at the, your um, like you know at your phone, and he's texting you. He's like, "You're the only person in contact. Let's uh, you know where should I go? What should I do?" Uh, Innocence along the same line, supposedly. I haven't got deep enough into it to get to the the point of it. And that was, uh, from what I read, it's to deal with uh, a murder. There's a murder that happens, and you have to prove whether or not someone's innocent of that murder. And you do it all based off of texts that you're receiving like in its little own application. And I love that. And I hope that this one does what the other one did, 
Uh, let me see if I can find that application because I'd really like to shout this one out because it spent I spent a lot of time on it. Um, I spent a lot of time on it, and it, and what it did really that was really nice is that it did it in real time. So when you're when you're playing when you're playing it, um, you're saying, "Okay, hey, uh, I'm gonna walk over there," and he and he's like. I'll talk to you in 15 minutes. And he texts you in 15 minutes. Hmm. About, like what? Uh, what? What's happening? Uh, let me see. One second. Hmm. 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 Filling space. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I gotta figure out what this thing is. It was absolutely amazing. Uh, I guess I'll never find it. I guess I'll never know. No, nope. we <laughs> will Listen never next know. Anyway, tune in, tune in next week when I tell you the application that I was thinking of. Thank but anyway, this one's really watching. cool. This one's really cool, <laughs> and uh, this one's just about a, is about a murder, and it goes through all of this stuff, and and you're supposed to just like choose whether or not you think someone's doing this or that. It's it's really good. Um, oh, it's called Lifeline. That's the one. Lifeline. 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 Lifeline's oh. amazing. If you've played Lifeline or haven't played Lifeline, absolutely play Lifeline. I'll get back not. to you guys. <laughs> I'll get back to you guys in uh, when, when like when I actually finish Innocent. Because Innocent seems like in the same vein, but Lifeline's awesome. Uh, you should absolutely play it. Um, the end choices for Lifeline are actually absolutely like stressful like absolutely stressful because you're <laughs> in it you're involved it's a long story uh if you're into text-based adventures choose your own path kind of stuff um download lifeline right away it's hmm. a blast nice it, it's it's dope and there's a sequel to it also once you finish that one lifeline two <laughs> this time <laughs> is for the electric marbles. chair glue <laughs> well, yeah, that kind of works. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> anyway, that's that's that was my that was my weekend uh, as far as mobile games are concerned. Oh, did you ah, get any anyway. normal games in? I got one normal game in, and that was Keep Talking No Explodes. Ah. But I did oh, it. A great yes. game. It I a did lot it. Of fun. Yeah, we did it differently than I've done it before. In the past, I've done it with friends on Discord, um, mm. you know, the lonely man style. Where like, but this time I did it on our board game night with everyone in the room, and that was awesome. So I just had my laptop up at the end of the table, and then everyone was at the table, and everyone was pulling it up, <laughs> you know, pulling up there. Everyone had uh, like an actual physical copy of the paper, so the papers were all strewn about the this like long table <laughs> yeah. that we have. And everyone's like frantically trying to figure stuff out, and I got to sit there with the bomb and like fiddle it back and forth. So it was really, it was nice. it was pretty engaging with everyone like seeing everyone's faces, like yeah. trying to figure everything out right there. Everyone had their own little little method for each thing. It was awesome. I think the very first awesome. time we played that game, we did it that way. Yeah. We had yeah. like five of us at my apartment. And we had a computer desk yeah. where the diffuser would be. By the end of the night, it turned into just Adam, Tom, and I. Like yeah. everyone else had tapped out. <laughs> we had, three just kept every, going. Yeah, and you know, one person was on a laptop, I believe, and then we had two PCs set up, each with two monitors a piece. Yep. So we'd have like the PDF open and like four copies on one computer, and then like half and half one screen <laughs> for awesome. two pages, and half and half the other screen for the other two pages. And we everybody designated. had a dedicated, yeah, yep. we designated like this person does all the complex wires. I think it was Irk. Irk always did all the complex wires. But I and went out. I was, all, and I, I was the bomb yeah. handler, and I went out and I got a bucket <laughs> of chicken, and I was eating chicken while waiting for everyone else to figure everything out. I'd be like, okay, the bomb's got this and this and this, and then I'd eat my chicken for two minutes until everyone else told me what to do. <laughs> <laughs> that's cool <laughs> when we we did it um i mean i guess that happens everyone assigns the roles but it was really cool with the actual physical paper there because mm. people could actually like write on the paper and they'd like throw papers around it was really cool because yeah. it felt like you're in some like crazy bomb defusal unit and everyone was just like throwing shit around. i don't fucking know like yeah passing <laughs> things back and forth like leaning over each other's like piece of paper like no no, no you do it like this 
It's right. really cool. A- so, after that, you know, after that one night where we got really into it, I ended up going home and I printed off the bomb defusal manual and I had the physical copy ready to go. And then we right. never really got back into it. <laughs> oh shoot! So you well, know, we should do it. Well, you know, we could we easily play that again. We, we could should. easily include you guys into that that game of our normal Monday night game mm. night. Awesome. Which you guys don't get to attend, but you could yeah. essentially attend that one pretty that easily. You know of. Also, just throwing it oh, out there, shit. that could be a future postcast game. It could like be. This well, be a great postcast, postcast game is the free game this weekend of Overwatch. So everyone yeah, out true. there should that, probably that's start that's, a, that's, kind of a, that's kind of a big deal because that's a huge game. Like, it's, it's the second pop- time they've done it. Is it really? Yeah. I didn't know that. Oh, second I didn't even play it the first time. I've never played Overwatch still, so... I played it for the first that time will, today. That would be interesting. Wait, you haven't played Overwatch? No, I don't know. Oh, crazy. But you did yeah, play I'm last I'm that week. guy. I've also never seen The Godfather, so <laughs> there's that too. I'm, I'm usually that guy. But you did play last week's free-to-play game. Oh, shit. I did. Yeah. That How was. tell uh, us about that one, Adam? <laughs> yeah, so the la- last week's postcast community game was World of Tanks Blitz, which is free on Steam. We thought, okay, World of Tanks, you know, I've heard of World of Tanks before, and this one is free on Steam, and yeah, it should be a good time. And then it was just kind of, first off, it, you start, you, it's kind of bad. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm, I'm jumping around here. But the first thing you interact with is a tutorial that is about 360 steps long, takes you about <laughs> yeah. half an hour to an hour. Uh, yeah. It, it's it's one of those it's like to do this click on this button and it's the only thing it'll let you do you can't do anything until you click that button and then it Jeez. says okay now to to load your your ammo into your tank click this button and then that's the only button that you can that's the only thing you can interact with is you click on that button and then it goes through and you go through this and then it's like okay play a match and you're like okay cool finally we're done with the tutorial we'll play a match and then i can you know go from there you get it done with the match, and it's like, oh, cool, here's the experience point you got. Click this button to use it to upgrade to your level 2 tank. And then you do that, and then it says, okay, now click this button to look at the convoluted tech tree to see which part of that tank <laughs> you want to upgrade with your other set of points. There are three <laughs> forms of currency in this game. And this game is entirely pay-to-win. Entirely. Absolutely. It was it was so obscenely bad. Obscenely pay to win. <laughs> so <laughs> we ended up, somebody uh, was watching us stream this and they ended up jump, jumping in with us. And this guy had a level 10 tank and we had level two tanks. Damn. And you, we you. absolutely, we, it was impossible to beat him. Yeah, like there would, we, there would have been no way for us to beat well, him because you're, you're leaving out of any and even hurt him. Yeah, you we, gotta, we you're leaving firing. out one important ta- tactic as well Ooh. is that. The, one there, there's there's two versions of this game for sure, and the yeah. other version of this game, the normal version of this game, uh, we had someone in at the time that is a professional at the other yeah. game, yeah, actual <laughs> pro, fourth in the world, uh, as far as that one was concerned, as they got fourth in in like the worlds or something like that, mm-hmm. and he couldn't do anything. This thing. <laughs> yeah, so so literally, we we had five people versus this one guy. And we unloaded everything we had, and we couldn't ever get one HP of damage on him. Literally. No. Not one HP. Um, So, they they give you, like all good pay-to-win games, they give you like a a chunk, like $30 worth of like gold or whatever. Um, Mm -hmm. You can actually buy better ammunition with real-world money. So what I did is... I uh, when when we weren't trying to kill this one guy, I threw all of my money into this ammunition and I was just one shotting people left and right. We were all the same level. We were all using the same vehicles. But because I was paying three bucks a bullet or whatever, I could one shot <laughs> fucking everybody. That's great. <laughs> it's it's, so it's funny. Seems like a good model. Excellent yeah. game design for a competitive environment. Very fair. Super fair. <laughs> it is amazing. Everybody, Bust out your wallets, boys. We're going pro. <laughs> it, they had they had some weird fog of war stuff too. Like if if you mm-hmm. fell into fog of war, which was very yes or no, there was no gray area to this. Um, you would be spectating your teammate 
and the guy they were looking at would literally disappear. The character model would go halfway right. behind something, and the entire <laughs> model would disappear off your spectator view. <laughs> right. It was fucking weird. It was yeah. super, super bizarre. So, so yeah, I don't know. You probably don't, don't want to play it again. No, God no. We, I, we played. Not we, even we, a, no way. Interested. I'm not touching that. But we now burned, it all, it, we burned the free money and we uninstalled. Yeah, we absolutely yeah, uninstalled. But at the end of that cast, I did play the actual game. Yeah, was and it, it was how good. Well was it? It was, it was awesome. Okay. It was awesome. It still has like, some pay to win I, aspects to it, though. Right. Well, according to like a bunch of people, you ha- there's like a certain point you have to get where you have to buy like you have to pay your ten dollars or something like that, and then you can mm-hmm. get the tanks that you need to complete the game. But I don't really care too much about that. Like I didn't play enough of it to say like okay, well I can buy you know my bullets. It's not that it's not that bad. So from what I understand, you have to pay. You have to pay for like the ex the expanded edition is kind of what it feels like. Mm. Or you know, you, you when can you pay act- for ammunition in that one too, because I used to play it on Xbox 360. Oh, you could. Okay, yeah. well, I'd like to. I'd actually like to play it some more, um, and gonna... uh, and see what it's like beyond that. Because I did download it, and it looks great. And yeah, it I plays watched, totally I watched you different. play it a little bit, and after playing what we were playing, and then I I saw you launch the game, and I was like, oh. This one is an actual game. <laughs> this right. one, it actually looks okay. <laughs> well, it, yeah. plays, it has pay to win, but it's fun. It is a very enjoyable game, even if you don't pay. I was just, I do know that it still has those elements. Hmm. Right. And like, depends on how bad it is. I'd have to watch it or play it or do something mm-hmm. like I'd have to play it more. I'll, I'll spend some more time on it. I guess I really did like kind of how it worked mechanically over the other game. Mm-hmm. It seemed much better. So yeah. if I go in and I find out that's pay to win, then I'll come come back to the cast and bash it. <laughs> but if not, right. then uh, then I, I feel you know it, again. It felt like a totally different game. The mm-hmm. only redeeming thing that might have happened is that they decided, you know what? Let's rip all the bullshit out and put it in this other game wrapped in bullshit and make the other one right, cool. right, for, exactly. For the people who are downloading or, or listening to the audio version of this cast, I do want to I do want to repeat something I already said in chat. This this should be titled World of Banks. <laughs> absolutely right well i mean definitely that version we played the version we played was mm-hmm. was bullshit yeah I don't, wanna, I don't want to discredit world of tanks because we played the crappy pay to win free version that, on steam that's exactly it, that's um, exactly right? a, a publisher but, or a developer had to say yeah. yes we are putting our brand name on this mm-hmm. pile of shit. So yes, True. they do right. deserve some of the brand, some of the uh, yeah. And they do. Things. They deserve to know that they like wargaming. I think is the is the people that do it, and it it's garbage. It's yeah. it's a big pile of crap. So I hope that <laughs> I would like to see if the other one is as bad. But uh, yeah, they deserve they deserve it at least to hear that. <laughs> That's a bunch of, yeah. The other one's advertised on TV. I think that one had Arnold Schwarzenegger. Oh, really? Advertised? Yeah. yeah, that's true. Oh, yeah, of course. Because he has a tank. What a of badass! Course. He has a tank. <laughs> but World of Tanks Blitz, like even even with the pay to win elements aside, it wasn't really that fun to play. It's true. Yeah, just it really general, wasn't that. Just wasn't that great. No. But um, a game that was fun to play, and this was a new game. Um, not new in the sense that it just released, but new in the sense that I've never played it before. And it was actually a game that I completed, which doesn't ever what? happen. And <laughs> so I played N- Little Nightmares. Oh, what is and this? Not big nightmares. No, just nice. little nightmares. Okay, no, so it's, not, it's not night terrors. Pretty, yeah, just, no, it's a pretty cool idea. Okay. So it's it's kind of like a. It's a it's kind of a platformer. Think think like inside in limbo, but instead right. of being completely two D left and right, you still got some depth movement too. But it's mostly two okay. D. That's pretty um, and you play as this little kid. And the whole point of the game is it's like a childhood nightmare. Like it's kind of a horror platformer thing. And you play as this little kid in the raincoat and you're, you know, running through this big scary place with these monstrosities in it. And, you know, you're trying to navigate through a world that's bigger than what you're meant for. You know, you have to pull the chair across the room to jump on the chair to open up the door handle kind of thing. Oh, yes, yes. I remember seeing this. This looked good. 
Yeah, it was really good. And it only took me, I think it's like three and a half hours to beat. So it's not a very long game, which is probably why I was actually able to beat it because my attention span only lasts so far. And <laughs> like, don't you slip into like this dark, dim- I don't want to say dark dimension, but like this nightmare zone and stuff at times. Or am I thinking a different one? Uh, no. I think I you're think thinking so. of the, the whole thing is house in Mario 64. <laughs> no, the whole thing is kind of the nightmare zone. <laughs> okay, okay. Because what I'm thinking has this little kid in his pajamas. He's oh, around. no, you're thinking into of... Into the uh, sleep. Oh, well, yeah, Into the Sleep. That's the game. Yeah, yeah, that one. That one looks fucking awesome. That, that one's played. first person. So I actually, I have played that, um, mm-hmm. and I've read a bunch of reviews. It turns out, like, the first level is good, but after that, it loses all charm. Um, and actually, uh, the, the game... The little bit that I played of it, it got really obtuse really quickly. Mm-hmm. So they use the okay. wrong type of triangles like, in their game design? Uh, so, okay. Th- think it. about like a maze <laughs> of invisible walls that every time you hit one, you go back to the beginning. Like there was What's wrong with that? Is that what, 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 how is that bad game design? Some, I don't understand. some people consider <laughs> that bad game design. But seeing as oh, you okay. and I you know, play games like Dark Souls, drink... Um, we don't. <laughs> okay. That's the only thing I'm saying. So Good. if you've if you've seen the the trailers for Into the Sleep, you kind of get the the vibe they're going for that you're an innocent little child among this very creepy world, and everything is you know, um, well, like a little nightmare. And the game, I, I made the comparison to Inside and Limbo because the game plays really similarly to that. Um, it's you know a three to four hour long game. Um, the any sort of story is very ambiguous. It's more about the world you're in and wanting to progress and you know kind of figure out what's happening. You know what? How do you get out of here? How does this all work? What is that thing in the background? Why does that guy have really really long arms? That kind of stuff. <laughs> um, and it's just really well done. It's uh, the atmosphere is incredible. All the, you know, the the visuals are cool. The design of the levels, it very much does feel like a little child having a nightmare. And you feel overwhelmed at at parts at just how weird it is. It's it's very strange. But um, but yeah, the art's all great. The sound is really good. Uh, It was just a good experience. And I played it in two sittings. I played for about an hour one day and then the other couple hours the next day. And it was just one of those games that was solid the whole time through. Uh, I was interested and engaged the whole time. I wanted to actually sit through and beat it, and I did. And it was great. I recommend it. Hmm. Hmm. Good deal. That's super sick. It mm-hmm. kind of reminds me a little bit of like the Madness Returns franchise. I guess it's just the one, but <clears throat> like Alice in Wonderland. I don't oh, know why. Yeah. I, I don't yeah. know why. It's not like that close to it, but right. I guess it's, it's like that. that kind of, yeah. Like it's like a darker. It's like a darker game, like atmosphere overall. But it has mm-hmm. like, I don't know. It has that innocent, like childlike fear to it. Yeah, that's exactly. You know what I mean? Yeah. And that's and that like like Psychonauts had that. You know, t- Psychonauts had that same like like just a lack of understanding fear which is different than like than a silent hill a silent hill fear or something like that even if like you don't get it or you don't like something's weird to you it's it's different it's like yeah like, oh that guy's a and that guy looks like a butcher but he's yeah. like an evil butcher because butchers are evil <laughs> for why i don't know i'm a kid i don't understand <laughs> it's, both, it's both innocent and horrifying at the same time it makes you kind of feel that so you brought right. up Alice in Wonderland, Josh. Did, is there a horror game based in that space? Yeah, it's called Alice. I mean, it's not... Uh, really but Alice Madden Madden Madden. Madden. Well, no, because I'm just saying, like, in general, just think of how... Fu- like, look at the Tim Burton one. Yeah. And just think <laughs> yeah, how and th- fucked up and horrifying that world could be if someone really wanted to make a horror game out of Alice in Wonderland. I mean, Madness Returns is, like is that cr- creepy twisted take on Alice in yes. Wonderland like it's 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 worth if you haven't played it it's worth your time but the whole time the whole thing is her slipping in and out of this like like psychedelic situation so, so you know Madness Returns is the second game in the series the first right. was uh, American McGee's Alice right and that was by far 
you know, those two were by far the, the creepiest Alice in Wonderland. I always yeah, felt yeah. like Alice and Alice in Wonderland needed to be creepy and mm-hmm. like, and weird because it's all weird and it's unsettling, but this one takes it to the, that next, like where you go back and forth between like the, like kind of the acid trippy, like drug induced you know <laughs> thing, but it, it takes it to a darker level where the people and the things that you're interacting with are based in reality in the same, and much like, uh, the Alice in Wonderland, but this one's more like of a like a normal person, and they, and it, I, I'm trying to like try to w- word this so that it makes sense, but not ruin too much, because if you do want to go into it, but it's like the people that in your life that are affecting you, uh, like parents or or um, you know shopkeeps or something like that, like people that are affecting you, and it sort of hands handles it in that way. So like. If someone scolds you, they're a big giant monster, and this is how you have to deal with it in your own mm. like magical world. Hmm. So hmm. it's it's really it's really worth your time for sure. Okay, I'll check it out because I've I've always enjoyed like the Tim Burton spin because I love the darkness of that. Yeah, the, I, the um, first game came out in two thousand, um, so it's it's been around for a while. Yeah, uh, and from what I remember, it was actually pretty good. It had some weird. It was during that time when platforming in 3D adventure games was considered normal and okay game design. Right. So there yeah. are some frustrating <laughs> moments to it. Um, I, I felt, yeah, I felt like Alice yeah. Banished Returns is one of the last really good 3D platformers. Mm-hmm. Like going through it, um, I, I remember mentioning it to myself while I was playing. I'm like, wow, this is actually a good. 3d platformer and it was it, it was actually later like especially the, the last one the madness returns was actually later in you know in the game like everyone was moving on to like first person shooters and car racing games and things like that and mm-hmm. and at this point there wasn't as many i'm not gonna say it was like where it ended because it's, there's still 3d platformers even now but here is where you started getting getting out of that trend and this is like one that was like boom like here is a whole bunch of really good platforming all wrapped into one game. So if you want to like go back and deal with some like really cool, fun platforming, uh, Madness Returns is a great one. Yeah, it's, yeah definitely. I'll, I might have to check that out because the first game was, was good. I've heard good things about it, definitely. Yeah. It, yeah, it's less, it's less of a headache than Psychonauts. Psychonauts <laughs> is really good too, but and people always call on that one as like a really great game, as a really underrated game. But when you when you talk about like underrated games that you don't hear about, especially platformers, like I feel like Madness Returns was better in a, as far as like gameplay was concerned. Because Psychonauts has like some freaking mind melting levels where you're just like, God <laughs> damn this platforming. <laughs> like, God damn this platforming. <laughs> <laughs> So, and if you played it, you remember yeah. <laughs> the circus <laughs> level. Anyway, <laughs> well, anyway, Adam, mom, um, we kind of somehow segued out of that. Um, <laughs> did you have anything else you did this week? Um, I played a little Rocket League uh, today and yesterday. Didn't really play throughout the week much. Um, other than that, I bought this game called Local Host. And it was like five bucks. I remember seeing a PC Gamer article about it and how it was cool. And it, it's something to do. It's kind of like a, like a, I don't want to say point and click, but it's just a, a kind of a story driven pick what you say with dialogue options. And it's kind of this, you know, you're tasked with um, erasing these four hard drives and each each of the four hard drives has an AI on it. And you're supposed to convince this AI to unlock itself so that you can erase the hard drives. And I'm sure there's a lot of philosophical, you know, moral ambiguity. I didn't really get very far into it. I only, I played for maybe 15 minutes and realized that you couldn't save and pick back up. So I'm going to have to just sit down and do it all in one one sit through, which from what I understand, it's only about an hour long anyway. Okay, I was going to ask the, if you can't save that. Yeah, <laughs> that's like back to like early 1990s ideology of sit down and beat mm-hmm. the game. Yeah, it's it's a it's a small little game. It 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 runs in windowed mode. It doesn't run full screen. It's just like it's got a simple pixel art, and the whole game is mostly dialogue options. Um, but I didn't really get very far into it, and one of the reasons I wanted to bring it up is because Tom did get farther into it. And I wanted to hear from Tom what he thought about it and, you know, a little bit more about it since my experience with it's so 
a little. Yeah, so... I bought this game because I like weird hipster shit. Um, <laughs> and hearing about a game that makes you convince um, AIs instead of hard drives to unlock themselves so you can wipe them. Basically, convincing an AI to kill itself sounded like just enough of a depressing yeah. cyberpunk game that I was interested <laughs> in it. That's exactly um, what made me want to pick it up. <laughs> yeah, I was like, holy shit, this looks really fucked up and really depressing and kind of philosophical. Um, I'm not going to go into spoilers, but I've I've got some major, major problems with this game. And most of it mm. centers around the core of the game, which is the writing um it's it's trash uh the the gameplay is i mean there's there's really no gameplay aside from picking dialogue options but that's that's okay i play walking simulators and it actually enjoy them you like art or pretentious art games i do this is right <laughs> up my alley this is the perfect game for me but the writing is so fucking just obtuse and, and thick and oh i hate myself because my parents were mean to me i mean that's that's not like a thing that happens in in this game but it's it's so bad it's it's like somebody went to a high school and picked up some emo teenager's diary and like threw that into a game about cyberpunk shit and it's just... think, of, think about your pretentious art games Think about who normally plays them. You're going to get some of that in some of these. Yeah, you are. You are. But when you look at something like Dear Esther or Gone Home, right? Games that are looked at as, oh, wow, look, it's a pretentious fucking art game that I've played in front of people and they've literally fallen asleep on my couch watching them. Um, <laughs> because you're an awesome host. Yeah, I, I'm great. Um, <laughs> yeah, come on over, everybody. Yeah. We're going to play Dear Esther. <laughs> <laughs> come on, everyone. It'll you're going to love watching me play uh, The Walking Dead. Yeah, it was it was actually a great uh, a great detour because we were playing Skyrim all night, and then we detoured into Dear Esther, and everyone fell asleep. So, you know. So totally you fits. invite people over to your house, and you play epic one person adventure games. To be fair, we all wanted to see it. I mean, it's not that bad. I mean, especially like like Uncharted and some of those games. Like, there's like Last of Us. I've watched someone just do a playthrough of Last of Us because it's so good visually. It's just like coming over to a friend's house and watching a movie. It's a lot. That's the time we live in. <laughs> mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Um, like, I know that me and my wife sit down and we play through. Um, we'll play through all the Uncharted's. You know, each one that comes out. We sit down and we play, which reminds me, I need to get the newest one so we can play through it. <laughs> I, I am also a firm believer that there are a lot of games that you don't have to be playing to enjoy if you're sitting next to somebody and they're playing it or, you know, you're in a group together all playing games and well, taking turns. Well, let's, let's yes, be honest. Absolutely. However, the, the if you people, fall asleep. Let, let's be yeah. honest. The people that watch our stream have no issues with watching a game instead of actively mm -hmm. playing it, right? Mm -hmm. It's true. It's true. I mean, sometimes that's fine. Yeah, it's I'm, fun. I'm totally it's actually fun it. to watch people like play games. It's, yeah, it's... Uh, until until they suck. Like I don't imagine anyone watching <laughs> me actually enjoy that because they're just like just just fuck it. no. Tom, listen, it's the first Goomba in Mario Brothers. Stop <laughs> running the fuck into it. It's why it's I don't fun watch your still. Streams, that's even right? that's also fun. You know, okay. You know, what I find I actually find that really fun, especially if someone's not very good and they're just figuring it out. It's super funny and it's fun to watch. The things that I hate is when people are not talking and they're not and they're doing okay because they're not doing bad <laughs> because they're not doing bad enough like to be like oh this is you know fun, this is funny to watch mm -hmm. and they're not doing good enough to like oh i can learn from this person they're just kind of bland and just kind of coasting it's just through the game mediocre like, like oh i guess i'll go over there sick so What's anyway, that yeah, oh, okay, lo sick. local host <laughs> um without without going into spoilers the little bits of puzzliness to it uh where the gameplay is is really contrived really really mm. contrived you can actually paint yourself into a corner in this game that you can't get out of and you will get a bad ending um oh. and then and then in going back and actually figuring out how to do it there's it, it, the choices seem almost arbitrary um you're like oh shit mm. i shouldn't have done this thing you know, 40 minutes ago, because now I can't actually go back and fix it. Um, you will make unfixable mistakes early in the game that will ruin the rest of your playthrough. And you won't know it until the very end. Um, uh -oh. On top of that, the, the shitty writing, I just, 
I do not like this game. It was a waste of $5. I enjoyed the concept. I like the idea, and this could be done far better by someone who actually has a team of decent writers, but localhost was a waste of money. Yeah, the concept seems awesome. I mean, yeah. if you was, yeah, that's a great concept. You could that's, spin I mean, this. Me. I think it would be even cooler, like if you had the concept of you are the developer who created these AIs and you're now right. tasked to kill them. Yeah, that would be fantastic. That's an awesome mm -hmm. little writing prompt. That would be great. Somebody tell Frictional Games or one of those to make this. Oh my God. <laughs> if Frictional got a hold of something like this, it would be amazing. <laughs> It'd also scare the shit out of you, but it would be amazing. Yeah. So what else have you been up to, Tom? I know um, you've had to been playing more. Yeah. Especially since you hated that. Uh, yeah, it was, it was bad. It was Cleanse just, that palate. It was just bad. Um, so I did play some uh, PUBG, Player Unknown's Battlegrounds. Played it at work. It nice. was good. Introduced someone to the game. We sucked. It was horrible. <laughs> uh, but it was still so fun. It was a good time. People are getting really good at that game. Yeah, yeah, scary it's good. It insane. was Jesus. And, and the first person does change the entire game. Yeah, um, it does. Played some more Doom 2016 because it's still awesome. Still going through on a higher difficulty. And um, I might have gotten a little bit drunk and beaten an area I hadn't before. So I was stuck on an area that was just fucking hard. So after knocking back a whole bunch of beers, I played some Doom and beat it. So, yeah, there we go. It's great. So if you ever get stuck in a game, get drunk and try it. You will you will totally win, I promise. Especially All if right, you like Grand Champ, here I come. <laughs> right? <laughs> oh, I still remember one night Adam and I got hammered off of whiskey and started playing Rocket League. <laughs> My God. God, like I thought I was clicking on all these different cylinders because I was realizing things that I never <laughs> noticed before. And then I realized I was playing fucking terrible. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I've done that with Dota before. I'm like, oh my God, I got this. This team comp, I've got it. It's perfect. And I played. It was just trash. It was an hour and a half of <laughs> trash. Well, it's like Guitar Hero. So back in the college days, a lot of Guitar Hero was happening. Mm -hmm. And also back in college days, a lot of drinking happens. Yep. And you will see the really? people that after being a little drunk, pick up that Guitar Hero controller and they go God tier. Oh, and my then God. You got people uh. like me who drink three beers <laughs> and go from being able to play shit on expert. No problem to holy fuck. I can't hit two buttons. <laughs> One of the people well, I, I mean, it, I think it I think it has to do with the amount you take in because like mm -hmm. getting a little tipsy, like all of your, you know, all of your second guessing yourself goes away. You're like, fuck it. What's that? What's that comic with the what's it called? The. The Balmer, oh, the Balmer peak. curve. Or oh, peak. the Balmer yeah. peak. Yeah, yeah right. Balmer exactly. peak. That's it. XKCD. For, so we, yeah, it's an XKCD for about programming skill and how many uh, <laughs> how intoxicated helps you slash hurts. There's you. a there's a sweet spot. <laughs> yeah, you you've got to get right on the curve. If you drink a little too much or a little too less, you you totally fuck yourself. Well, it's funny. So it looks like <laughs> for those audio listeners, it looks like a roller coaster. It's going up slowly, 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 and then you get to the peak and it's beautiful, and then it drops. Yeah. <laughs> You've got to hit this, this perfect point. And if you go and over, I feel like it's, this, it's gone. I feel like this peak works for many things, not just yeah. programming. So, <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. We, uh, we knew a guy in college, and he got so drunk, he couldn't talk. He couldn't actually say words anymore. But he woke up the next day, and he's like, hey... Who, like, five-starred this on Expert on Guitar Hero? Did did someone come in last night? I said, no, dude. <laughs> that was you. You oh, fucking shit. wrecked it. <laughs> Zombi like, zombied out and just <laughs> killed it. <laughs> he tried it. <laughs> to play it again. He tried to play it again, and he couldn't get past it on hard mode. It was fucking hilarious. <laughs> Oh, it's so good. Yeah. Other than that, um, I've been playing Guild Wars 2. There's an expansion that either comes out today or yesterday, one of the two. Um, I don't actually have any of the expansions, and the core game is free. I bought it way back in the day, but there's no monthly hmm. fee. I've been, you know, just chilling, listening to some podcasts, some music, grinding a little bit. It's been a lot of fun. Um, nice. Yeah, it's, it's a good chill played, out game. I played the first Guild Wars. I didn't play the second one. I played yeah. a lot of the first one. Yeah, it's it's free. The core game is free. You make an account, download it, and you can play it. If you get a hankering for an MMO, 
go try it out. We've got nothing to lose except like 60 gigs of hard drive space. If I ever go back to an MMO. Hours and hours of time. Yeah. I, I have one option and that's the only place I'll ever go again for an MMO. No, no, don't do it. You RuneScape. know you can't. It, it's my baby, man. No. It's, it's my namesake. Oh, RuneScape. <laughs> RuneScape. I love me some RuneScape, man. I was actually yeah. on there about three, All four right. months ago playing me well, some RuneScape. Well, if you decide you want to play again, I'll trim your armor for, with gold for free. Yeah. Fuck you yeah. just got to trade it to me. <laughs> you got that black, that sweet black trim? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Fuck yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wow, I just realized how that might have sounded. <laughs> Whoops. Uh, okay, fine. but yeah. That's, anyway, that's all I've been playing. <laughs> a, Have you been playing right. anything in in between your your weeks of being lost in the woods? Did you play anything lost in the wilderness? I wish I would have <laughs> played Dark Woods or Lost in or whatever that horror game is. Dark I want to try that. Some, Jesus, that would be wood? terrifying to play the in the real forest. Life. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. In, in in real life, I'll be playing the forest. Go Did you get captured by cannibals down to their cave? <laughs> <laughs> so um. Checkbox. Um, did some Rocket League, of course. Um, so my sister and her husband were in town, and you know they. My sister and I grew up playing video games. Granted, she grew older. She stopped playing. Her husband, I think, did some like Call of Duty Four, and that was about the last time he really touched any. So they're not. A, they don't not know it. So of course, I have a Switch. I've got four controllers. We have Mario Kart. Oh yeah, perfect. Nice. <laughs> so the beautiful thing about Mario Kart is even when you suck, you enjoy it. So um, Gina and I, you know, the first race, it was like her first, me second, and Jarrett like fifth, and Beth like 12th. And it was like, oh, shit. And Damn. then like time and time again, she kept finishing low. Jarrett got up there with us, but she kept finishing low. And she's like, I swear I'm having fun. Don't worry about it. And I'm just like, this is awesome. Because like she was finishing dead last sometimes, still enjoying herself. Granted, she eventually nice. started finishing better. But so, yeah, Mario Kart, great party game, good time. Speaking of party games, we also did Jackbox. Yeah. Um, That's always good. So, one of the versions of Jackbox that I don't think we've ever streamed is this statistics one where they ask you a question and one person answers. It's like, so what percentage of people piss in the shower? And <laughs> one person will answer, uh, probably 35%. And then everyone else in the audience says, okay, do you think it's higher or lower than that? If you're, you guess that uh, right, uh, you get points. If the person guess, and then however close that person got to guessing, it also gets points. They like oh, that crazy. one the most out of all of them. Really? Yeah, and I think wow, that one, we might, we might do that oh. on stream some night. It may not be a post-cast thing, but some night, like maybe, I don't know, tomorrow night or something, I'll put that up we'll have some fun with that because it's a fun that's, it is a fun variant that's been the one they we like played the absolute least TKO. yeah but i liked it a lot uh, they didn't like tko too much wow tko is amazing Whoa. tko yeah, takes excellent. so much time you only have four people you have to remember yeah. the less people you have oh, yeah is diminished like the more people you get the better tko is yeah that's true because it takes 10 minutes to get ready to actually start having fun with it so um there was that jackbox mario kart I'm taking those home for Christmas. It's going to be a oh, good yeah. time. Um, I kept going with my Horizon Zero Dawn. I now can override. I'm doing things in this. I'll be quick because I know I've talked about it a lot. But I'm doing things in this that I've never done before because it's on the hardest difficulty. And I'm making sure I explore everything. So I've unlocked all areas, which I didn't do before with like map unlocks. And I can now control every dinosaur in the game. I can override and make them fight. So what I'm doing now is going into areas that I normally avoid because these fuckers are hard. I'll sneak up on one of them, convert them to my side, and then just watch them fight the others. It's awesome. Nice. So um, Mind I've been, control. Exactly. It's beautiful. And when you uh, convert them to your side, they actually get stronger than the normal variant, which is cool. So I've um, been doing a lot of that. Um, v Dob or uh, what was he in Twitch? V Dobby Dobby, that dude. Uh, started that guy. He went back to playing <laughs> a game that I used to play a ton, and I'm about to sign up after this cast. Oh no! Have you guys ever played any? Uh, so don't confuse what I'm about to say. Any text-based strategy games, not text adventures like Go North, Go East, but a text-based strategy game. No. So what do you mean? there's this game called Star Kingdoms. It's a beautiful game. Used to be huge. Um, some issues with player base have caused it to shrink a lot, but it used to have over 50,000 players. So it was a pretty good game for being text-based. 
dude, we're talking late nineties, 50,000 online. Okay. We're not talking now. So okay. what was, what the, uh, the game is you have a kingdom, you explore for land, you, um, can, you build either research facilities, barracks for military, uh, residencies, probes to spy on people, all this different stuff you can build. But 10% of your population, you can recruit to military. With that military, you choose what type of military units you want. And then you're the, everyone in this game is kind of divided up into what they call a sector. There's 20 people in a sector. That's like considered like your house. They're, they're, they're your friends. No matter what, you okay. don't fuck with them. And then your sector gets into a, an alliance. And then those guys are now your friends. Hmm. And then maybe this other alliance did something really bad. So now your alliance hates them. So what you guys do is you fight them. So you literally send your military to attack the other guys. You get their land back. You get their population. You sabotage all their shit. And then eventually you destroy their kingdom. And when their kingdom's destroyed, they're dead. They're out of the game. This is a round-based game. It's beautiful because as people get knocked off, it turns into a last man standing kind of thing, which is really fun. Mm. But it's heavy on politics, like actual communication between people, which is something I really like. That's the one thing I missed about this game is like old school console online. There was a ton of community. There were some clans. There was politics. I like that in a video game, especially when it's not part of the actual code, but it's part of the Mm -hmm. core understanding of the game. Kind of like Eve. Eve has its rich history Mm -hmm. that isn't in code. Yeah. It is in legit history of what's happened in the game. Yeah, The the players have got a such and such corporation did this weird big ass thing and it literally blew up thousands, hundreds of thousands of U.S. dollars. Right. (laughs) Yeah. Dave was a part of a lot of that stuff. That's what Dave used to play. He's big. Really big on that stuff. So talk to. I, I, I'm really glad. It. I'm really glad I didn't get into Eve. I had a uh, there. I had a friend in high school that loved Eve. He'd play the shit out of it every day, and mm-hmm. I just couldn't get into the interface. It was Microsoft Excel with a space theme. Um, right. That's, which, that's that's which, right. That's what it is. Yeah. Which is that's Eve. Like that's not a disparaging comment to Eve players. They're like, yeah, duh. That's it's an economy simulator. That's all it is. <laughs> yes, I guess you can go out with a spaceship and blow stuff up, but we don't really play that. But, right. uh, yeah, I, I never I never got into it. But holy shit, Eve is a crazy ass game. I love reading about it. I love watching videos about it. And I do not like playing it. And it's just <laughs> it's that feel I like, though. It's, yeah. it's that idea that the game is more than what the game is. Yeah. The people yeah. make it into something. And then like inside your, you have forums. This game was forum based. Your hmm. sector had its own form. Every sector had its own form. That's how you talked. Okay. Every mm-hmm. alliance had its own form. That's how you talked. And that's how you build up these politics. And there's a messenger system in the game where you send messages to other people. It essentially was mm-hmm. like a social network video game in a weird way hmm. where all the things you're used cool. to seeing in social networks were in this game in the late nineties. Like you, you direct message people, you have forms and then you just hate people and you get everyone to kill them. It's awesome. So but. what, what you need to do is you need to take this, you need to make it free to play, put a shiny interface on it, recreate mm-hmm. that entire feeling and just make fuck tons of money. Oh, you want a yeah. thousand more population? 50 cents. Yeah. $1.99. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> do, you want, do you want to conscript people need from this 50. alliance into your alliance? <laughs> you can pay 50 cents a head. Yeah, the low low. See? <laughs> yeah. I'm liking it. But Here no, um, I'm probably going to sign up, so you might hear me bitch about that a little bit. I have to be careful. Yeah. Because this is a game that's tick-based, so every hour you have things to update. So at minimum, you need oh, to be God. on every 12 hours at minimum. Oh, shit. Yeah, no, but, I'm already out. <laughs> that's the yeah, way too much no commitment. No, no, if you want to I've be already to pulled the core on that. No, but See, you, that's, that's more uh, commitment but, than my marriage gets. Damn. But it's, it's literally it's but, Damn. <laughs> once every 12 hours it's, but you you have to remember, this, is day. this is something you can do on your phone and it takes you five <laughs> minutes so it's not a huge yeah. time commitment it's just every like every 12 hours five minutes bam 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 done done for it yeah i'm not doing that just but, saying um, <laughs> i mean you, you spend more time playing video games now in one week than what you would on this a year doing that yeah, but I have to be committed to it. Yeah, but it. it's, it's different. <laughs> there's, there's the, I can play this one video game whenever I feel like it. Whereas right. this game is like, you have to play this game for a little bit when we tell you to. 
Yeah. Right. <laughs> For three months and then it's done. But yeah, so you're not gonna I'll, tell me how to live my life. I'm out of here. <laughs> See ya. <laughs> but no, I, I like those kind of games. It makes everyone play by the same rule. Everyone has to be on for it and forces people to be active because that's part of the game. People have to be active. In other words, the game doesn't it doesn't work. Right. Mm-hmm. But yeah, so there's that. And then one other game I've been playing a fuck ton of in the last three days. Grow Tower. This is a mobile Grow game. Tower. This, this is a family safe podcast. Yes, yes, I'm not talking about my dick. <laughs> I'm talking about a game called Grow Tower. Wow. You're talking about the Grow Tower. Got it. Yes. That was a strong left and a strong right. <laughs> Let's keep going. So, um, keep going. so going typically great. on my phone, I had this rule for any game I had, it was going to be semi educational Sudoku, word searches, some sort of word solving game. Mm-hmm. I've, mm-hmm. It, but finally, I had the urge. I'm like, man, I haven't played a good tower defense in a while. So I get on the Google Play Store, I'm like, tower defense. And I see Grow Tower, I'm like, hmm. I look at the picture, I'm like, this doesn't look quite tower defense, but let's check it out. So this game, you have a, two core components. You have a tower, and you have archers that stay behind the tower. The tower eventually turns into a wall that defends your kingdom, that the archers are behind shooting all the waves of enemies that come. You buy more archers, you buy a bigger tower. Once your tower gets so big, you put heroes on it that have special abilities that do things to the oncoming waves. Okay. It's a number growing right. game. You start with 10 archers and you're in level five. Eventually you get to 200 archers. You're at level 130. And there's things that you can go into outside of that. So you have just your tower and waves come. But you have this overall map where you can go to different kingdoms. This is solo player, 100% solo player. And when you capture that kingdom, you get more residual gold. So you have this constant flux of income while you're going out and attacking different things to get more constant influx of income so you can build bigger so you can progress in the main game. It's really weird, but it's think of it like a tower defense with a huge number growing system. Hmm. That hmm. so far seems endless. So huh. it's a good bus ride game, but it destroys my battery. Holy fuck. <laughs> really? Yeah, I've um, wasted 50% of my battery on an hour bus ride. Jesus, what the oh, hell? Oh, wow. That's yeah. no, there's something wrong with that. But That's the, granted, fun. granted, I also listen to a podcast while I do it. But yeah, I have to. But I have to have my screen brightness on full because of the fucking lights, which sucks. Oh, yeah, because when the light comes in the window of the bus, if you have your screen down all the way like yeah. I normally do, you can't see it. Yeah. Mm. So that's that's what it is. But that is all I've done this week. Until, you know, in about 30, 45 minutes when we're going to be playing some Overwatch. No, the call out, everyone. Overwatch. Start downloading that Overwatch. So, yeah. I think we had a little bit of news go on this week. Just, just a little bit. Just a little bit. Um, GOG. Uh, good old... Oh, wow. I was trying to say something else and I realized I was starting to say their name. Good old games. I was going to say good old GOG, but... Good old GOG. Good old, good old <laughs> good games. Old GOG. Good old G- G-O-G-O-G. Um, they've got a big-ass sale going on. Um, for those yes, unfamiliar with GOG, <laughs> they uh, sell DRM-free games. Yeah. A, lot, a good bit of those. I think you can it's actually even... Um, do they link with Steam? No. I can't remember if they no. ever had any. They're they their own not. thing. Okay. They, all, oh, oh, they okay. actually have their own launcher, too, now. They do. It's 100% optional, though. And yes. what's really cool is you can actually turn off features. If you don't like what auto-updates or... Um, friends list or anything else or the overlay you can just uncheck the boxes of the shit you don't want hmm. it's kind of nice oh nice yeah I'm glad to see it because I've been a long standing advocate of someone needs to rival steam competition yeah. is best for the customer but yes it is so they have a huge sale going on they have Kerbal for sale they've got um, Tom there was Little, Night- he brought- Little, Little Nightmares Night- was on sale as, as well 40 for per- hmm. 40% off yeah Oh, and quick, quick interlude back to what I was saying earlier, though. Kerbal, for those of you watching, I got a fucking astronaut stranded on the moon, which means I successfully <laughs> nice. landed on the moon, but I don't know how the fuck to get him back yet. So <laughs> stay Send tuned. Send him home. Rescue mission. It's like soon the to Martian happen. except for with the moon and yes. probably less plot involvement. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, probably. Okay. So, um, everything. Yeah. Gog's having a big ass sale. GOG.com. Go, go check it out. 
Outlast, currently free on the Humble Store. Yep. I love yes. this. Every, every once in a while they do this. Um, have any of you guys ever played it? I have yes. played it all the way through. I oh. played it and I am currently hiding under a bed. <laughs> yeah, I, I remember that story. <laughs> so Outlast, Outlast is um, it's pretty good. I'm not going to say it's the best horror game I've played. I'm not going to say it's not exploitable in some way. But it's 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 good it's solid it's a good game it's for free it's great it, you know Scary. worst case scenario you download it for free and you play it for a little bit and maybe it's interesting maybe it's not but i i actually liked it enough to play it all the way through um that being said you know there are obviously other horror games i liked a lot better that has its own problems but you know it's really dark it's really gritty the usage of the, of the camera night vision is very creepy um overall solid so for free you can't beat it yeah it's too scary i can't beat it <laughs> <laughs> it's yeah it's, it's they do a pretty good job of that it's, it is pretty tense yeah. um yeah i actually just got that it's my second free game off of humble if they do that but i nice. got to try it because i haven't played a good good game like that in a long time because typically yeah. i don't play those i enjoy yeah, them, so i just don't play them you're not the one that plays horror games that often I, no. I don't get the value out of horror games so i don't buy them anymore like i played through like i was playing uh resident evil and i'm currently at the top of the stairs too afraid to go down so i guess that's <laughs> that's where that character's gonna live <laughs> that, well, so that hey, character not, is now forever depending, gonna be depending on which set of stairs that is i'm <laughs> both impressed and i feel, I feel bad <laughs> yeah it's just it's just gonna be there forever <laughs> that's awesome <laughs> oh lord um also um some news that i think josh might be able to give a little insight to because i think he's the only one that's played half of this um fortnite is getting into the battle royale scene it seems yeah it's really good too oh my gosh i, I got into um actually playing uh for i i played the main game which is pve i played a bunch of that that's a really really good game if you guys have the time to do it do it mm -hmm. but if you uh if you get your chance to play uh fortnite battle royale and you haven't bought the actual full game the it'll be free on the 26th so you can just jump into the pvp portion of it which is PUBG. it's it, it is that it's exactly that <laughs> mm -hmm. um you can dive in and it'll feel look and feel exactly like it but you can destroy all the buildings hmm. You can destroy all of anything that anyone's standing behind, and you can build your own walls. So it's super sick. Like if yeah. someone's hiding behind a rock and you're like, ah, I don't know when he's going to pop, just blow up the rock and kill that guy because the rock <laughs> only lasts so long. Yeah. <laughs> it's really cool. Like if someone's standing up on top of a tower, you can start destroying the bottom of the tower, and the tower falls, and he falls, and he dies. It's great. Hmm. It's really, it's really cool. Pretty different, but it's like, very, it very me, different from. I like environmental influences like that. I feel yeah. that if if Battleman had, or sorry, holy shit, Battleman, <laughs> Battleman, if, if, battle battle, battle, if, if Battleground battle added man. something if like that, it'd be just awesome. as fast as he can because he's a Battleman. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! Um, but like um, another game, damn it, was it Battlefield Three? Tried to do that and they had to take it out because it was too exploitable. People were. Th uh, grenading the ground to make themselves trenches to take cover in and stuff yeah which awesome. is fine until it starts to bug out and you're underneath the map and shooting people <laughs> but like yeah. the fact that i think fortnite was made for that though there's more mm -hmm. environmental influence in fortnite yeah i think there that was an could old lend uh, it to be really cool there was an old shooter on the ps2 that did that actually red faction oh, oh yeah never, really cool you could take the you could take the rocket launcher and literally uh like make a cave out of the side of the mountain wall and door stuff. is locked no problem <laughs> door is gone or, or and the then wall. there was or the wall and there was another red faction game for the ps3 uh was it armageddon red faction armageddon yeah we've got were... like a sledgehammer and it wasn't that good but it was one of those where like literally everything is destroyable you have a sledgehammer you could sit and hit this building forever and eventually knock it down if you oh. wanted to but, hmm Oh, yeah, I'm, I'm a big fan of that in games. I think that's a good mechanic. 
Yeah, I think that'll be good, um, especially since Fortnite's free or will be free in this Hello? mode. It'll be really good. Hello? Hello? So, um, hi. 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 <laughs> Can't hear anybody. Good luck. Oh, hi. God. Oh, God. We've oh lost God, him. We've lost him. So, anyway, <laughs> we're going to push forward. Um, <laughs> Nintendo is um, using some two factor authentication now. Yes. Yes. I'll let you hit on that, Tom. Sure. So. Um, Nintendo decided to do something fairly modern, dare I say, with their online system. You can now use two-factor authentication. It's not some weird Nintendo-ish branded fucking bullshit thing where you have to, like, have six Amiibos and you put them on in a certain order. It's nothing like that. Thank God. You can use Google Authenticator or Authy or any of the apps that support that standard two-factor authentication, six numbers that change every minute format. Um... Go to your Nintendo account on the website, log into it, set up two-factor authentication. It is the easiest way to make your account way, way, way more secure. Uh, I set it up today. It is simple. It is easy. Uh, and it's effective. Yeah, I, I'm a big fan of two-factor. I don't tend to like password managers myself, but I love two-factor. It's okay to be wrong. It's okay. Anyway, um, so that's actually really... A, forward thinking for nintendo too which yeah. strikes me as odd as something to come out from them. <laughs> exactly that's the yeah. first thing i thought i saw this show pop up i was like wait a minute then two factor is awesome there's another nintendo there's another 10 years before it? they start getting into two-factor authentication <laughs> eric, eric, eric you might like it though because I, if you're anything like me i get super forgetful and like i forget passwords and stuff and having two-factor authentication is awesome was like uh reset oh no i love two-factor <laughs> i'm good to, I I'm good to go I use two factor on yeah. anything I get an option for. Yeah. Oh, nice. Okay, never mind then. Um, but yes, so that was really odd coming on Nintendo. Also, yeah. I do want to call out something real quick that was from the prior weeks. Did you guys get a chance to look at the new shit from Nintendo or Mario Odyssey? Uh, no. Uh, except wait, I know there was a big thing about uh, Mario having no chest hair, and I think Mario nipples were brought up at one point in time. So, Pretty sure. So they had a, um, two weeks ago it was a Nintendo Direct. They showed off a whole lot of shit. Um, a 3DS isn't dead. Um, they are doing a lot of support for that because typically, or pretty much, there's a lot of consoles out there. They're gonna sell to it until they stop selling. Um, but Mario, um, they showed off that it's going to have a star system like the, um, the original 64 one, but they're gonna be moons. <clears throat> You know, because you know, stay celestial. You gotta, yeah, you gotta change it. Um, they're gonna have a really fun lookup library for them, which I thought was interesting. So it's really going to be like a checklist thing, which could be fun. Multiple moons per stage, very Mario sixty four esque. Um, but to Tom's point about the Mario nips, um, there is a <laughs> wide array of <laughs> costumes that Mario is going to be able to get into. Like he's gonna have a safari one, his Doctor Mario one his jump man suit and then he has a swimsuit one where it's just him Hot. running around in a swimsuit that's it so um they just showed off a lot of that they showed off cappy that's a little more and it gave cappy a little more backstory for those of you who don't know cappy is the hat that mario has in odyssey it's not his normal hat he throws this hat hits an enemy he takes control of that enemy you see until until the nintendo direct with you know, the, the backstory established. I was going to skip this game entirely. I only play Mario games for the story. Obviously. <laughs> Clearly. <laughs> but no, they give they give a little bit of meaning because Bowser's marrying Peach, but Bowser also took Cappy's wife or something like that. This just in, Mario game kidnapped feminine people. Save them? <laughs> Maybe. Okay. Or play golf with them. Or tennis. Or, or race. go go-karting. Yeah, let's race. Or beat the shit out of them. But I kind of want to play brothers. soccer right now. Yeah, soccer sounds good. Okay. Let's, let's do, do it. it. All right. Oh, yeah. We're all friends here. Okay. So, yeah, that, that, that never, I never understood that about the Mario universe. Uh, yeah. But at some point, they'll come out and explain it, maybe. Who knows? But, yeah, so mario odyssey looking pretty sweet the cappy integration looks pretty awesome um you should check out the video from the direct it's only like three or four minutes it's pretty fun but there was one little more tidbit of news out of nintendo that they did not leak 
So um, some hack, oh, I don't want to, I call them hackers. People who evaluate code source for consoles. <laughs> No, they, they're, they're hackers. hackers. That's, that's fine. That's fine to call them hackers. Hacker is not a bad word. <laughs> well, no, but it insinuates that you're breaking things that you shouldn't be, where this is actually your own product or your own yeah, item no, you no. can break. Hackers, hackers are going in. There's there's bad hackers. There's good hackers. There's white hats, gray hats, black hats. Okay, drone out, Tom. Hats. Anyway, so... Um, <laughs> it's the Wild West out there, man. So many hats. So um, the Switch has an NES emulator in it. Some hackers found out. Um, mm. And not just this NES emulator, but NES Golf was on it. And then they found out, hey, NES Golf is actually playable. With the Switch controllers. Yes. The Joy-Cons. With, with the Joy-Cons. Oh. But they found out what, how and why it was locked. I can't remember the guy's name. It was Toru Iwata. Thank you. The former CEO <laughs> of Nintendo. God he rest passed, his soul. Passed away on July 11th. So, mm-hmm. if you set your date calendar to July 11th, 2018, have never been online. And, and also have a 1.0.0 version of the Switch OS. Yes. So, <laughs> never updated, never connected to the internet. You can do the hand gesture that he was known for doing in Nintendo Directs. Yep. And it, bam, starts the game up. Wow. Now, this, this has not been fully confirmed. Crazy. It's just mostly confirmed at this point. But it looks like uh, someone... In uh, uh, Nintendo made this as kind of a uh, a tribute to Mr. Iwata. Yeah. And the reason it was NES Golf is because when this game was being developed, they initially didn't know how to get all 18 holes on the cart. And he was the mastermind who came through and figured out how to get all 18 uh, holes on the cart. So that was a tribute to him that these hackers found out. And there are videos online showing it. Yeah. Now, if you're wanting to get a hold of this so you can play it, the game's not that good. There's better golf games on the NES. This is just a really cool tribute that I thought was a really fun thing to call out. Yeah. So, uh, so, you're, for those so are, you're saying I shouldn't go out and buy a switch and not update it <laughs> and switch the date and never go online to play this game. This um, wonderful masterpiece that is to, NES golf. I mean, you could just <laughs> go out and get NES golf. I'm sure it's like a buck or two at a used game store. Yeah. Or you can wait five years for them to put the virtual console on the switch. Yeah, oh, that's you. Spend like 10 bucks on it. Yeah, at least. No, no, no. It'll, it'll, it'll probably be five dollars. <laughs> but if you pay ten dollars, you'll get it with Mario Golf. So um, oh. for those of you who don't know about Satoru Iwata, he wasn't just some corporate figurehead that was president of Nintendo. Like this guy is a he, he was a fucking badass in every sense of the word. Um, Mm -hmm. He was a gamer. He was an extraordinary programmer. Uh, He single-handedly saved Earthbound. He saved Pokemon Stadium. He he actually fit the entire first Pokemon games area into Pokemon Gold and Silver. Um, Like, this guy is genius-level programmer and just a badass. If you want to learn about Satoru Iwata, um, go to YouTube, type in Did You Know Gaming Iwata, um, and you will see, like, this great... I think it's like a 10- to 15-minute video on all of the awesome shit he has done over his lifetime. Uh, he will be sorely missed from the gaming industry, and he was truly an awesome dude. Yeah, he died, I don't know the age, but I know he was very young from yeah. uh, cancer. Yep. But from that, we will segue to the end. So let's get happy. It's yeah. a happy thing. We're about to play Overwatch Yay. with everyone. Thank Overwatch. God we're almost yeah. done talking. Yeah. 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 Let's, let's get up from this. Ooh, let's do it. Overwatch. So for all of you watching us on Twitch, you should go over to our 72 PC YouTube channel and check out some of the content we got up there. We have all of our lost and founds we've done. We have all the Dark Souls we've done so far. We have all the Kerbals we've done so far. Eric have- said Dark Souls. Fuck off. We have some of the um, <laughs> some game reviews, some hardware reviews. We were adding content. We're finally getting YouTube content. Look We've at it. We made Whoa. literally one cent Look at us our go. monetization this month. It's one penny. Woo! Yacht That's time. Wonderful. But if you're over there watching our <laughs> podcast, you should come over to our Twitch on Saturday nights, 9 p.m. Eastern time, and come chill, hang out in the chat. We like to make it a little interactive. Saturday, Saturday, Saturday. 9 p.m., 9 p.m., <laughs> 9 p.m. Come watch 72 yes, Pin G- Connector drive yes, monster G- trucks. Monster <laughs> trucks. <laughs> trucks, trucks, trucks. But um, we try to make it interactive. We may not always call out chat in the cast, but we are active. We talk in the chat. Come have some fun with us. Um, if you're tired of us talking about Rocket League and Dark Souls and Kerbal, 
tweet at us at 72 PC podcast and tell us to shut the fuck up already about shut goddamn the fuck Dark up Souls. already about that goddamn <laughs> Dark Souls. Um, if you want some <laughs> links for RSS feeds because you're a heathen and don't use podcast apps, you can go to our website of 72 pinconnectorcom But if you use podcast apps such as iTunes, Pocket Cast, Stitcher, Google Music, and other shit, you can always find us on all of those fine platforms under 72 Pin Connector. All of them. All of them. Oh. But before we go, I think Adam has some parting words. Yeah. Yes. We would like to thank Drew Vanzi, Aya1234, and Amir Sarwari for following during the cast. Thank you. We don't have notifications that pop up during the cast because that would be distracting, but we do when we stream normally. But thank you for yes. following. Thank you yeah. for the follow. Aye. And with that, ladies and gentlemen, we're calling it wraps. We will be seeing you in about five minutes on some Overwatch. Oh, I thought we were rapping. Oh, join rapping. us! Yeah, <laughs> we'll post the Discord link in chat. Yes, yes as well Discord, as if you scroll Discord, down, Discord. if you scroll down a little bit, it says Discord. You click on it, you'll be in our channel. Yep. Oh, there you go. So go it's have right fun. There. We'll be there in a few. Join it. Play Overwatch. We're noobs. Until next week, yeah. though. <laughs> game on. See you, everyone. Bye. Bye.